Hello, and welcome to the Harp Conspiracy. Today we're going to delve into a topic that may have you reaching for your tinfoil hat. Throughout the world, many events occur that may seem relatively normal, but are frequently tied with a global conspiracy. The at one time government run program named HARP is no different. With a lot of the information as available, it does provide quite an interesting theory and may have some credibility behind it. So without further ado, let's look into what this program is and why so many people think it is more than what is officially admitted to. Outside of Area 51, no facility located in the United States has been as speculated about like that of the HARP installation in Gakona, Alaska. The facility started being built in 1993 and was finally finished in 2007. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, otherwise known as HARP, was built with funding from the U.S. Air Force, Navy, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, otherwise known as DARPA. DARPA is an organization that has its own set of conspiracy theories behind it, and if I was to get into that topic here, it would make for quite a long video. For the sake of the moment, we will just say that DARPA has been known to be involved in some questionable endeavors. Officially, the facility was built in order to analyze our Earth's ionosphere for the purpose of developing enhanced technology relating to communication as well as surveillance. Basically, the claims are that the military was interested in making communication with squadrons and submarines more effective during war as well as being able to spy on other countries. Within this, multiple reports claim that the device was utilized to be able to penetrate the Earth's soil to find out where oil and mineral deposits were before drilling. The project itself led many studies into seeing how the ionosphere reacted to different situations, but it also looked into extraterrestrial radio echoes as well as the ability to produce high density plasma clouds in the atmosphere. The HARP program was shut down temporarily in May of 2013 due to a, and I quote, contractor regime change. On August of 2015, the official reports emerged that the University of Alaska Fairbanks have been handed the ownership of the facility. That was the history of the area in a nutshell, but being as how I'm making a video about it, you know something more must be going on, or at the very least, claimed to be. While it is a bit out of order, one of my first observations is that the facility was said to change hands, but I find it interesting that the same university that helped fund its creation, one who worked very closely with government organizations, was handed ownership. Conspiracy or not, I find this change in hands more of a way to remove the government control factor from the site, all the while still being behind the scenes. That was a personal observation, however, so let's get into the meat of the conspiracy theories. Let's get the strangest one out of the way first, and that is mind control. According to reports, the facility uses ELF, or extremely low frequency waves, that it sends into the atmosphere, and when it's reflected back, it interferes with a human's brain waves. While this seems far-fetched, even for my channel, researchers from Columbia University as well as MIT have studied such effects and ELF waves can in fact disrupt the brain. At this point I'm unsure as to what proof exists that this is being done, but it is interesting to note that the HARP program did in fact utilize the waves during research. Also, in 1976, a device was created that produced the ELF waves at 10 Hz, which causes a form of hypnosis, to procure confessions from war captives in other countries. Something that may tie in with this theory, if true, is that in many locations such as Taos, New Mexico, people have complained about hearing an ear-piercing hum that never stops and officially doesn't have a source. Many view this phenomenon as the military's natural form of weaponry. Another theory going around is that global warming wasn't a thing until HARP was created. I am not an expert in this field of study, but personally I feel the Earth has natural weather cycles of hot and cold, and it isn't anything new. That is just my opinion, based on things I see, as well as reports of the ice recently receding from Greenland exposing vast fields of animal fossils, which leads me to believe the Earth didn't have ice at those locations during one point in time. Again, that's my personal view, so I'm not meaning to incite a discussion in the comment section about it. It is true that HARP self-admittedly was involved in experiments that involved creating dense plasma clouds, which inferred heating our atmosphere, as well as simply stating they're heating our atmosphere. 
The problem with this theory is that while experiments might have caused environmental issues, the idea of global temperature change has been around since the early 1800s. So for that, I call the theory debunked. Now, if the theory has changed to harp causing the warming to increase, then I might be on board for that. The last theory and most prominent is that harp has caused and is still causing fluctuations in our planet's weather with the intent of it being used as a weapon. This idea is a little bit more interesting when factoring in recent developments and strange weather patterns. While unrelated, my wife recently showed me a video from the BBC where NASA built a facility in Mississippi to test rocket engines that actually produced huge rain clouds. Within this conspiracy, the proof comes in the form of strange cloud formations that have been reported to have appeared before some of the world's biggest natural disasters. This includes odd clouds seen before the devastating earthquake in China, the jet stream change before the massive flash flood in Pakistan, and the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which included a tsunami and earthquake, as well as the recent weather changes in the United States. All these disasters are considered to be the result of intentional testing from the HARP facility. I found this image while looking up pictures in relation to this topic, and I think it is pretty damning if it's true. I have searched for the actual patent, and from what I see the words are mostly generalized in the picture, but the context seems correct. The only issue is that this patent wasn't specifically for HARP, but it was requested by Dr. Bernard J. Eastland for a device he had yet to build. Interestingly, he later made claims that the HARP facility had utilized his patents when construction started at the site. Of course, the claim was denied, and his invention mentioned in the patent was considered a crazy idea. In his defense, Dr. Eastland wasn't a crazy person and actually attained an award from the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission for his work on a fusion torch, which made it possible to reclaim usable elements from waste material. As for the theory, I could see weather change being possible, but I am rather unsure how something from the sky could cause earthquakes. One important thing to note is that in 1998, the Foreign Affairs Committee of European Parliament asked NATO and a U.S. permanent representative to NATO to join them in a discussion about environmental concerns about the HARP program, and they both declined the offer. The main concern was stated that the military doesn't spend that kind of money for pure science. From what I have found, the HARP program was funded over $30 million. So, if we are to believe this facility is pure in its intent, then why are there so many insidious conspiracies about it? The issue arises when dealing with the opacity of the site, as well as those involved in other situations on the same capacity. While it was officially slated to be open about what it does, and that it supposedly report everything to public journals, as well as being completely open to the public one day a year, it raised a lot of skepticism within conspiracy communities. While the public was allowed to tour the entire facility, it raised the question as to would the public know what they were looking at if weather controlling devices did indeed exist? Also, given that tours were only once a year, what secrets could be hidden well in advance from many prying tourist eyes? It has been officially recorded that Jesse Ventura, a huge conspiracy theorist, requested a tour of the facility and was denied access. While Jesse can be a bit out there, it leaves many questioning why he would be excluded from this completely open facility. Was certain secret devices not hidden at the moment? Would he be able to tell the difference between something mundane and something possibly sinister? Or were they testing something that, for public safety, he or anyone couldn't be exposed to that day? No one is quite sure, and this just adds to the mystery of the site. Many people of authority have taken a stance and stated that these ideas come from the mystery of the place. I get it. Much like the idea of the old guy in your neighborhood who keeps to himself quickly leads to rumors of him being a serial killer, or being told not to push that button makes you want to push that button. I feel the same thing goes for this place. Where I get caught up in the frenzy of conspiracy is the fact that the same groups who at one time owned the site have lied to the public repeatedly in the past. Area 51 didn't exist even when photo after photo of the base were easily available until it was finally acknowledged in 2013. This came about only due to a request filed in 2005 under the context of the Freedom of Information Act. It sort of goes a step farther where I remember reading an article in the Popular Mechanics magazine in the 90s where they blatantly lied about walking around Area 51 and it being abandoned with rubble and broken glass everywhere 
and that the whole operation had been moved to a new location. A few years ago, reports were everywhere that NASA was officially privately owned, but to this day, it is still owned by the executive branch of the federal government. While this doesn't seem to fit with our topic, it actually does, since officials and reputable magazines were both feeding lies to cover the truth, and I think this plays a major part with HARP. In fact, Popular Science Magazine, the sister publication to Popular Mechanics, posted an article about the site with officials stating that conspiracy claims were unfounded. The article even included an excerpt from Stanford University professor Umran Anan stating that such claims of weather control were simply misinformed people's ideas. It is following the same patterns that Area 51 did previously, even down to the same form of publications. At this point, I'm unsure what to think, as I try to look at things as critically as possible, but some of the information just doesn't add up, both on the conspiracy theorist side, as well as the official standpoint. I will admit that a lot of the information is quite intriguing, if not a bit scary, if the stories are to be believed. Personally, if the government told me the sky was blue, I would have to go check for myself, but do I think they are harboring a weather machine in Alaska? I'm not sure. I'd love to hear your input into this topic and find out what you think is really going on. Whew. Conspiracy videos seriously leave me feeling drained. I look forward to returning to cryptid, ghost, and alien topics next week. As usual, if you would be so kind to click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you would like to see more content similar to this, let me know by clicking that thumbs up. I also wanted to mention that I do have a Patreon page available for anyone who is interested in extra content that can't be found anywhere else. The link for that will be in the description for anyone who may be interested in that. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.